Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police use drones, dogs and guns to try to finally persuade four fugitives to surrender. Details on how an hours long standoff of sorts started and how police finally brought it to an end. What was supposed to be a fun time for school children turns deadly after their bouncy house is picked up by the wind. The details on this tragic incident coming up in your morning headlines with David Sears. And we're at the home of our San Antonio Spurs, not getting ready for a game, but for a big job fair that we're going to tell you about this morning on Good Morning San Antonio. We'll tell you about how you can become part of the Spurs sports and entertainment team. Thanks to the Salvation Army, thousands of local children will have gifts this Christmas. Coming up, what it means to families receiving these gifts. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, December 16th. If you are sniffling, sneezing, watery eyes, maybe feel a little itchy right now, we can talk to Justin about that as we go outside with live cam. We've got a jump in the mountain cedar. Here he is with more on that and our forecast. Hey, good morning, guys. It almost doubled today, the mountain cedar. So we are now officially well into mountain cedar season, I'd say. We'll show you those numbers here in just a second. First, let's start with the morning lows. I know these may seem sort of insignificant, but really, this is so far above average. This is an unusual number here. We dropped down to 69 in San Antonio this morning. That's it. That's going to be another record low maximum, I think, today. You see around the area, 60s and 70s to start. There's a look at the pollen count. Mountain cedar is up to 8,280. And if that wasn't enough, molds have jumped into the moderate category of 560. So not a great looking pollen count today at all. 66 Bernie State, 69 right now, Canyon Lake, 72 in New Braunfels. Just like the last couple days, we're going to start off cloudy. Then you may see some sun this afternoon, and that'll boost those temperatures to near 80 degrees. Yesterday we hit 81. If we get to 81 today, that will tie a record high. Here, here's a look at some of the headlines. Records again, possible today? Sure, today and tomorrow. Saturday, our front comes in early. We think just after sunrise, some showers and storms with that front. Then it gets cooler and windy. We get a little bit of a break, uh, especially early on Sunday, but showers return by Sunday afternoon and linger into Monday. So a lot to look out there in your weekend forecast in next week too. We're going to take a look at that forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Look forward to it. Thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with Transguide this morning. There's I-37 at Carolina and Highway 90 in Nogalitos. We had a, a stalled uh, big truck out there for a while on the access road, but it is now clear. Let's dive right into today's 9 at 9. President Joe Biden is pledging to help those affected by last weekend's tornado in whatever way possible after seeing the damage firsthand yesterday afternoon. The National Weather Service says the twister that devastated Kentucky was a high-end EF4 tornado. Search and rescue teams are still combing through debris looking for survivors. Over 100 people are still missing, 88 are confirmed dead, and thousands are expected to be without power for weeks. Data is still coming in on how effective the vaccines are against the Omicron variant. A study from South Africa suggests the two-dose Pfizer shot is only 33% effective at preventing Omicron. But Dr. Anthony Fauci says a Pfizer booster shot bumps up protection to 75%. Studies being done on Moderna and the J&J shot are still being peer-reviewed. The U.S. Navy will start discharging service members who refuse to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Officials say the separation from the service will take place as soon as possible. As of last week, just over 5,700 sailors were not vaccinated. Roughly half of them are asking for an exemption due to religious beliefs. The Environmental Protection Agency is working to update health advisories after new documents indicate a chemical regularly found in America's drinking water could cause cancer. The chemical is called PFOA, and officials are linking it to an increase in kidney cancer and weakened immune systems. The agency will hold its first public hearing on the process of removing this chemical from water systems today. Three companies are charged with negligently causing the oil spill off the coast of Southern California in October. Federal prosecutors say Amplify Energy and two of its subsidiaries responded slowly and improperly to a pipeline leak. The companies argue they responded in a timely manner. They now face corporate probation and millions of dollars in fines. 
This week is the busiest time of the year for the U.S. Postal Service. Over 2 billion packages are expected to be delivered this holiday season. Over 200 million of those will be processed this week alone. USPS says if you haven't shipped your presents yet, you're running out of time. With inflation increasing, the Federal Reserve is speeding up plans to wind down easy money policies. After its last two-day meeting of the year, most central bank officials penciled in at least three interest rate hikes next year. They also approved plans to scale back bond purchases by March instead of June. Nearly a year after having a major car crash, Tiger Woods will tee up alongside his son Charlie today at the PNC Championship. Woods nearly had to have his leg amputated following the crash, even fearing he would never play golf again. The game will take place in Orlando, Florida. Pre-showings begin tonight for the new highly anticipated Marvel movie, Spider-Man No Way Home. The movie picks up from the previous version where Spider-Man's identity is revealed to the world. The film will be in theaters nationwide beginning tomorrow. And that's today's 9 at 9. And here locally, how would you like to work for the Spurs? That's right. The Spurs hosting a big job fair today over at the AT&T Center. RJ Marquez is there for us this morning to tell us more about it and how to get in on the Spurs sports and entertainment team. RJ, good morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yes, we're at the home of the five-time NBA champion, San Antonio Spurs. And, of course, not only the Spurs play here, but they have other several events actually getting ready for a big boxing match that's going to take place here in the next day. So, And we have concerts, all sorts of events that take place here at the AT&T Center. And that's what we're going to be talking about today because we have a big job fair for Spurs Sports and Entertainment, hiring hundreds of jobs. So joining me now is Casey Heverling. He is the Spurs VP General Manager for Spurs Sports and Entertainment. So talk to us, Casey see a little bit about who you're looking to see out here and what type of applicants you guys are trying to get out here for this job fair, which starts in about uh, at 10 a.m., right? 10 a.m., yep. 10 to 2 today. Uh, we're looking for any, any enthusiastic folks that want to be a part of uh, our events and the exciting things we do here, uh, creating memories um, that, 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 that last for our community. So we have a, a lot of different opportunities, security, guest services, um, a number of different um, uh, chances for folks to come down and get to learn more about what we, what we do here, kind of a behind-the-scenes look and see if it's the right fit for them. Um, but really, we're looking for folks that want to be a part of the Spurs family and the culture that we've built here around creating those memories. And that's always such a big part of the Spurs family because even from covering games here for years uh, for KSAT, I mean, you, you think about all the ushers here and the people, they, they get to know you. I mean, they definitely kind of get to know each other and the fans get to know the ushers and whatnot. So that's sort of what you guys are looking for, right? Just to kind of continue that family tradition, but also bring in some people that are looking for jobs. Absolutely. It's, it's never more apparent than during the holiday season. Uh, you know, we have those longtime season ticket members, our fans around the community that come in and they know their ushers, they know their their SSNE employees, and they're, they're swapping family Christmas cards and, and everything like that this time of year. So it's very much a part of what we do and, and the, the excitement and the experience we try to deliver for our fans every night. And it's not only for uh, this job fair, it's not only for people here at AT&T Center, you guys are also hiring for SAFC games, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So basically we have opportunities that run throughout the calendar year. It's, it's, uh, it's a flexible scheduling system. So, uh, you know, these opportunities allow you to work around any other jobs or obligations you might have. Um, and so we're, we, we, we're very flexible um, in the availability and, and being mindful of that. And, and that runs across all of our events, concerts. Uh, Spurs games and SAFC games out at Toyota Field. Okay, so one last quick question here, Casey. Um, where can people find some more information on this if they're still thinking about coming out here to, to the AT&T Center today? Absolutely. So uh, if, you're, if you're not able to make it out 10 to 2 today for the job fair, we will be hosting some, some more job fairs throughout uh, January. Um, but you can always go to our website, at and Center.com. Um, and you'll, you'll find the links there to apply in advance or, um, you know, outside of the job fairs that we're hosting. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Casey Heverling, for joining us this morning. Good morning, San Antonio. Appreciate the job that you guys do. Again, guys, this job fair runs till 2 o'clock today. And as Casey just mentioned, you can also go to the website and get more information there. Come be a part of the SSE team as we uh, get ready for the Spurs season to continue. A lot of big things on the calendar here at the AT&T Center and also at uh, Toyota Field. Mark and Stephanie? Thank you, RJ. Wondering if the coyote needs an assistant. I, the coyote's job not up for grabs, right? <laughs>
<laughs> no, an assistant. <laughs> yeah, oh, an assistant. Yeah, okay, maybe the coyote. I know the coyote has a team. Yeah, because uh, actually that's a story that I'm working on for the future here. Mm -hmm. But I know the coyote has a team. But uh, coyote, maybe, maybe an assistant. Not at this time. Maybe. Okay, okay. Casey, okay. Say maybe. Well, we'll, we'll say Casey. I, I All right, guys, RJ is tempted, but RJ, you have a job. Come home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come back. All right. Thank you, RJ. That's uh, sure. I could just stay here all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of finding a new job, the Better Business Bureau is warning job seekers to be extra careful these days. And right now, employment scams are the number one scheme reported in San Antonio to the Better Business Bureau. So the BBB says scammers are doing their homework and getting more creative, victimizing families who are looking to make ends meet. Although you may be searching for a job on the legitimate website, experts say to look for a requisition number or a job ID on the actual posting to vet the company and the recruiter. Also be leery if you're automatically hired for a position and stay away from jobs that require for some reason gift cards or information about your bank account. The work always sounds too good to be true. In other words, um, it's easy for you to go to any retailer, any store, load up gift cards and transfer the money and then it's gone. It's just like cash in the wind. Zero to two percent of the time do we see people get any money back or any relief from giving money via gift cards. Um, it's just highly untraceable. Users can track scams and should report if they come across any to the BBB or the Federal Trade Commission. That can help prevent others from being victimized. We have links to both on KSAT.com. And time now, it's 9.09 and about 70 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMS at 9, decades of helping children during the Christmas season continues. Still ahead, how the Salvation Army here at home is making sure every child in San Antonio has a Christmas gift. But first, a purse snatcher gets more than he asked for. This story next in your morning headlines with David Sears. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. Hi, I'm Dana with Republic of Texas Window Company, here to wish our veterans and first responders a very Merry Christmas. In your morning headlines, a bounce castle deaths in Australia, plus a purse snatcher gets a purse but then pays a price. An NFL head coach fired and the airlines are worried about 5G. David Sears is here to explain all of this. Good morning. I thought all this modern technology was supposed to be better for you, faster, easier life. Sometimes. And not if you're <laughs> stuck on a plane on a tarmac for two hours. No. Not better. We'll get to that in just a second, but first let's start with this tragic news from down under. And parents, you should pay attention to this one. If you own or rent one of those bounce castles, apparently wind caught the inflatable castle just right and lifted it up over 30 feet. Five children fell to their death. Two girls, two boys were among the dead. They didn't release the gender of the fifth child. There were also four critically injured. Losing those kids in that way was so horrific, the Prime Minister of Australia even commented. The events uh, that have occurred today in, in Devonport in Tasmania are just shattering. They, they are just unthinkably heartbreaking. And young children on a, a fun day out together with their families and it turns to such horrific tragedy. At this time of year, it just breaks your heart. Uh, given the school class those kids were in, they were probably between the ages of 10 and 12. And one of the reasons the prime minister decided to express his emotions, the bouncy castle, part of a school celebration marking the end of the school year. All right, come back to this country. Let's go to Cincinnati, Ohio. You're looking at surveillance video. Obviously, this is a Kroger grocery store. It's a camera out in the parking lot. Watch right through here. Wait for it. You'll see it in just a second. It's coming. Uh, I know it's coming. There it is. You see that? You see those two guys? That's a purse snatcher right there, and that's a guy chasing him. That's just a customer chasing that purse snatcher, and oh, he's not going to let him get away with taking that woman's purse. Deshaun Presley caught the guy, then got him on the ground. You can see he kind of gave him a little what for. Purse snatcher lost the purse. Another customer picked it up for the lady, 87-year-old Pat Gions. Deshaun wasn't going to let it happen, and Pat, who was very grateful, couldn't understand why that guy just didn't ask for some help. Hearing her voice screaming and her being scared, I just knew I had to do something. I was a little bit hurt to think that somebody would do that. And I told him, I pointed at him and I said, you know, if you needed something, all you had to do was ask. So way to go to Sean. Derek Vaughn is the snatcher's name. He faces felony charges of robbery and theft. His bond is set at $55,000 and a little scolding from the purse snatch that he took from. All right, the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Urban Meyer, 
fired. That was announced last night. Meyer was trying to earn back the trust of his players after he was exposed on social media in an embarrassing bar incident involving a young lady at a bar in Columbus, Ohio. Then this. Earlier this week, he was accused of kicking a player during the preseason. Offensive coordinator Darrell Bevel will take over as the interim coach for the rest of the season. The Jaguars have only won two games this year. And finally, if you are a frequent flyer or you're just an occasional flyer, you could be in for some more frustrations with your airlines because of delays. It has nothing to do with weather. How about 5G? CEOs for major airlines in Capitol Hill testifying yesterday. They were there to warn Congress. They claim that when Verizon and AT&T offer 5G starting in January, it could cause problems with thousands of daily flights, which in turn means delays. They told Congress that 5G could interfere with some of the sensitive electronic pilots used to navigate landings in bad weather, and it could happen at dozens of airports across the country. The only way around it would be to divert flights to other airports, and that would cost passengers time and money. The communication companies don't agree. They say they already have 5G up and running in other countries and that there are no problems with flights. They say the airlines here are just fear-mongering. The FAA is uncomfortable with the safety risks. They have no answers for you. They, they tell you that uh, nothing that we can do. And while the airlines were there to talk about 5G, they walked right into another discussion. Some senators wanted to know why there were so many delays and cancellations this past summer. Doug Parker, CEO of American Airlines, said airlines had too many planes and too many people in too many wrong places. Yes. A lot of us realize that. Remember, the airlines also got $54 billion in pandemic bailout money. So if you are flying over the holidays, get ready. You're going to be making some new friends. <laughs> Air travel expected to be the highest it's been in a couple of years. That's a positive spin. So yeah. you might as well make some friends, friends and yeah. have some good conversation right. with your mask on with your <laughs> in the airport, on the plane. But, you know, take your patience with you because, you know. And that's not even, that's without the 5G stuff yet. That doesn't even start till next year. Right. So. That's true. All right, David, thank you very much for right. seeing a little bit of talk yep. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Well, talking weather now, Justin Horn is here. And Justin, something jumped out on me on social media yesterday mm -hmm. of note, and it kind of fascinated the weather nerd in me. It was that line of storms that you were keeping an eye on up in Iowa moving at an ungodly pace. Just incredible. I, I haven't seen anything like this before. The, the storms last night were moving 85 miles per hour. The line itself, possibly even faster than that. Uh, just incredible to see, and it produced so much severe weather. I want to show you some of the wind gusts across the country yesterday. First, we start in the Colorado area. They had a wind gust you see there in Lamar, 107 miles per hour. That was non-thunderstorm associated, just gusty winds with this strong storm system. Kicked up so much dust, you could see it on the satellite picture. Pretty incredible there. You see Dodge City, Lincoln, Nebraska, 93 mile per hour wind gust. Then you get into the uh, what the thunderstorms produced here. It was sort of like a direct show event, a uh, long track wind event. And uh, more records were broken here. Not only are we talking about winds, but we had so many severe weather reports. Uh, 20 tornado reports, 400 plus wind reports. That's incredible. 92 mile per hour wind gusts with some of those storms. And uh, there were wildfires associated across parts of Colorado and uh, parts of Kansas with those strong winds I mentioned earlier. Uh, and there was a new state high record temperature for December in Wisconsin. They got up to 72. So just a lot of records with this storm system. Pretty incredible to see just how strong it was. And now it's beginning to move away. Still producing some snow, but weakening as it does. Good news there. There's another one behind that that's going to help to produce uh, another cold front and push that south into Texas. That's the one we'll be watching. Thankfully, we're not expecting severe weather with this front, but it is going to produce uh, some showers and storms, I think, uh, as we get into Saturday. Right now, we've got cloudy skies, 71 degrees. Dew point is at 67, and we've got a south-southeasterly wind at about 10 miles per hour. Looking at the satellite picture, a lot of clouds. This is basically a repeat of the last couple of days. I mean, we can't shake this pattern right now. We will Saturday, but uh, today and tomorrow is going to look very similar. We do have some breaks in the clouds, and so that uh, will allow for some sun this afternoon, bringing temperatures up to 80. Our record today is 81, so we're going to be right there, close to a record. 73 right now in Gonzales, 71 in Austin, 67 in Kerrville, 68 in Uvalde. Dew points in the 60s and 70s. This air is very, very muggy. 
that doesn't change either. And uh, looking at the forecast temperatures today, I mentioned 80 here in San Antonio. There could be some mid 80s down towards Catua. And then tomorrow morning, upper 60s, close to 70, right back up around 80 degrees. You ready for a change? I think we all are. And that comes Saturday morning with our front, and then you'll see those temperatures drop. 50s both Saturday and Sunday. A lot of cloud cover, and there's potential for some rain. We'll time that out for you here in just a second. And then notice temperatures go back up above average as we get into next week. So here's the future cast. Here's our front. Friday afternoon, it's moving through North Texas. We may see just a shower or two. But by Saturday morning, this is 7 a.m., here comes that line of showers and storms. Should be through here by about mid-morning, but I think we're going to get some rain lingering through the lunch hour, and then that pushes south by the afternoon. We get a little bit of a break late Saturday, early Sunday. But then by Sunday afternoon, an upper-level storm system moves in from the west. That brings showers back into play. Again, late Sunday and into early Monday, we're going to see a decent chance for some showers around here. And then by Monday afternoon, this is clearing out and we get some clearing in those temperatures rebound. There's a look at the seven day forecast. Uh, I mentioned 52 on Saturday, windy. Those temperatures will start off warm, but end up in the low 50s. And then 52 Sunday with a 40% chance of showers late, 30% chance early on Monday, 56, but clearing. Monday afternoon and then back into the 60s and 70s next week, guys. That's going to feel like a polar vortex compared to what we've had. Pretty much. Lately. Yes, uh, it'll feel very cold, but a good change. Good change. Thanks, yeah. Justin. 922, about 71 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, we take you live to the Salvation Army where angel tree presents are being distributed to San Antonio children. Tiffany Buttas will join us live after the break. Just about 926 this morning, the Salvation Army is spreading holiday cheer to local families and distributing toys and gifts to local families thanks to the Angel Tree program. The nonprofit's program started in 1979 back then, helping more than 700 children. Today, thousands of children will be given a brighter Christmas. Tiffany Huertas joined us live from this morning's gift distribution. Tiffany, how many children will receive gifts this year? Mark, 7,000 children will receive a gift thanks to this program. Just check out the line right behind me. You can see the cars already lining up outside the warehouse. And this is what the holidays are all about, giving back. We have the holiday music playing. We have smiles filling this warehouse. And we have Brad with the Salvation Army. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Talk to us about this program and how it's impacting this community. Well, this is phase three of a community-wide effort. So the first phase starts in October. That's where we register our angels. Um, then we have the adoption phase that goes from November until just this past Saturday. And then the, today is day one of three for the distribution. And that's what it's all about. And what does this mean for families? Oh, it means the world. You know, so many of them are struggling to and to sometimes put food on the table, let alone get gifts for their for their families. And so to be able to play a part in spreading that joy and even see tears of joy in some cases, it, it's, it's heartwarming to see. And it looks like this year, again, things are a little bit different with the cars lining up. Right. Talk to us about that. Yeah, we actually did the cars, uh, the drive through uh, format last year. Last year, we were pretty much forced to because the pandemic was worse at this time last year. And uh, there were elements of that that worked really well as efficient. So we thought, let's just keep some of those things and, and still play it safe a little too. And it's very organized. You all have been here for a few weeks already. Right, right. Yeah, it's been uh, since early November, we moved into this location. Uh, it's first year that we're here in this spot. And uh, the staff and our volunteers have been just diligently putting it all together. And toys have been coming in the last couple of weeks. and. And it, it all comes together. And we're seeing a bunch of bikes right behind you, right? Yeah, yeah so bikes are one of those things that's timeless. It never goes out of style. You know, you see like Barbies, bikes, you know, certain th balls or certain things that are here every year. And other things are kind of trendy, but. So throughout the year, you can always donate and give back to the community through the Salvation Army, right? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, funds are year, any donation funds are year-round programs, especially right now when you see the red kettles out. Uh, just know that the dollars that you're spending, they stay local and they help families right here in San Antonio. Well, I'm so excited to be here with you this morning, and we're going to hear from a volunteer. Yes. 
Absolutely. in a little bit, that's what makes this all possible. Yeah, too. You know, we couldn't do it without our volunteers. Uh, they're the backbone of what we do here as far as uh, being able to make it happen. And what's great about the volunteers is a lot of them, uh, there are, we do get some of them that come through and tell us that they were Angel Tree recipients once upon a time. So to them, pay it forward. It's really cool to see. I'm loving this Christmas music. Yeah. You can't have too much Mariah Carey, can I say? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Back to you guys. Yeah, we, we heard that right from the get-go yeah. this morning. All right, <laughs> Tiffany Huertas, live over at Angel Tree Distribution. Thank you. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Our defenders looking into some, uh, what some say is a growing issue inside the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Dillian Collier, Dylan rather, Collier's report is just ahead. But first, a look at some of this morning's top stories, including how a pursuit across the city led to an hours long standoff with police. On the east side overnight, it happened in the 1300 block of Hayes Street near North New Braunfels Avenue. Police say several people were hanging out in the street after leaving a bar when someone fired a single shot. A woman in her 30s was hit and was later pronounced dead at the scene. Detectives are now looking into more details into what led up to that shooting. Brand new details about a standoff that finally ended the early, early this morning. San Antonio police say all four people involved were juveniles. It all started with a chase in Kirby around 9 last night. Police say officers in that city had spotted people in two cars shooting at each other. SAPD's helicopter eventually picked up the pursuit and followed one car to the west side of San Antonio. Police there say suspects were hiding behind and under a home in the 200 block of Loma Park. They finally got them all into custody around 1 this morning. They are going to face several charges, including evading arrest. And taking a look outside with live cam, uh, a very mild 71, not cold yet. <laughs> I feel like we're having to get creative here because mm -hmm. it's the same shot like every day, <laughs> same temperature. Yes. Uh, we're kind of stuck in a rut for right now, but uh, there are some changes trying to move in our direction. I want to show you the temperatures across the country. Basically, two thirds of the country is now cold. The other third is warm. We're still in that warm third. If you look at the numbers behind the cold front that is starting to move into Texas. It, it's pretty chilly. Six in Bismarck, three in Cut Bank. They had record highs yesterday in places like Wisconsin. It is cooling down there behind this powerful storm system. Now, I'd love to tell you that this front's going to move through San Antonio. It doesn't, at least not yet. We got to wait until Saturday before we get that secondary push of cold air, and then we will feel some of that here. You look at the numbers across the state, 33 in Amarillo, 39 in Lubbock. So they're in the cold air. We are not. And this is what you got to love about Texas this time of year. Look at the spread in temperature. 33 in Amarillo. It is 80 in Brownsville. And uh, we're sitting at 71. Not a lot of rain with this initial front. There will be some showers, maybe a couple storms up there across North Texas. We've just got the cloud cover, the sticky humidity and cloud cover. And I want to show you this one more time if you missed it earlier. Mountain Cedar jumped up today, 8,280. It's in the high category. And the molds are moderate, so a rough looking pollen count. Forecast for today, we'll get up to about 80 degrees. That's just a degree shy of the record. Mostly cloudy, an outside chance for a shower, but we're not looking for any significant rain. We're going to time out that cold front, take another look at that forecast, the weekend forecast, here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. This year, thousands of local families receive help from the Salvation Army to make their children's Christmas wishes come true. The nonprofit is distributing thousands of toys and gifts as part of their Angel Tree program. Tiffany, we're just now back live from their Angel Tree toy shop. Tiffany, how is all of this possible? Through lots of donations and volunteers, of course. You know, I love this music. I'm just in my zone this morning. We're here. This warehouse is incredible, but let's talk about these volunteers. We have Angie here and Brad with the Salvation Army. Brad, talk to us about how these volunteers are involved in this whole program. Well, the volunteers are in it from the beginning. We actually have volunteers that help us with registration. And then, of course, the community plays a part in the adoption phase. And then here today, we couldn't do it without all the volunteers. Even the, the weeks leading up, getting this warehouse ready, it's because of our volunteers we're able to make this happen. 7,000 children. Yeah. That's incredible. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. How are families reacting this morning? Uh, they're, they're doing well. They're really excited and you know, they, they all have their plans and that's great that, you know, we can walk the toys out to them and they take them home and whatever their tradition is, they get to take care of it. 
and we're seeing Barbies, basketballs, bicycles, just so many different toys. Right, yeah, and those are all things that never go out of style. <laughs> and Angie, this is your first time volunteering through this program. Talk to us about how you're feeling. Sure. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say first, my credit union is an amazing company. They let their employees, they give us the opportunity to volunteer in the community. Salvation Army has a special part in my heart. I just love to see all the families out there, the parents getting the toys and items for their children. It's going to be an amazing Christmas for them. And this is our community, your community, so this is very special to you, right? It sure is. Giving back to the community is amazing. Uh, it's worth giving and paying it forward. We're all in this together to make it an amazing Christmas. And I know you're liking this holiday music. I sure am. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So all of this is also possible through those donations, and people can still donate, right, Brad? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we still you know, have the red kettles that are out, and we still have a need for bell ringers. And the, just people know that those donations they put in the red kettles, they stay here in San Antonio, and they make things like the Angel Tree possible and other programs throughout the year. Awesome. And what are your dance moves like? Oh, your dance moves? Not, Come on, show us a little bit. You know, I can do like the rolling <laughs> shuffle. Well, we'll, we'll sign off with a little bit of yeah. this, a little bit of <laughs> a little holiday move, you know? <laughs> we, we love the dancing out there. Thank you, Tiffany. Live TV is fun, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Wow. I'm glad they're having Thanks, fun. Thanks, Tiffany. Everybody's having a great day over yeah. there. Thank you. Right now, 938, about 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. The Spurs take a sting from the Charlotte Hornets. A recap of last night's upset next with David Sears. Welcome back. It's 942. Some are calling it a troubling trend within the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Felony cases, some of them high profile, like the Andre McDonald case, facing issues when it comes to how evidence is handled. That is not the only case in question. The murder of a beloved HEB employee is another instance where issues arose. In this defender's report, Dylan Collier attempts to get to the root of the problem. <laughs> In late October, more than two years after he was charged with his wife's disappearance and death, Andre McDonald sat in a Bear County courtroom in yet another effort to get his bond reduced. Your Honor, uh, first of all, I think Prosecutors in the case acknowledged they had just recently been made aware of an entire share drive of additional evidence handed over by the Bear County Sheriff's Office, described as up to 100,000 items that needed to be reviewed. The visiting judge, Raymond Angelini, did not appear pleased. But you have an obligation under 3914 to turn over everything or you can't be ready. After the state blamed a litany of problems, including COVID within their staff and the lead detective going on leave with a serious medical issue, McDonald's bond was cut down by hundreds of thousands of dollars. He was released from jail on bond a few weeks later. His defense attorney, John Convery, summed up the current status of the case. You heard kind of the finger pointing back and forth between the sheriff and the district attorney's office. It's really a mess. And it's happened elsewhere. Just last month, a mistrial was declared in the capital murder case of R.C. Curtis. Even though Curtis is accused of killing a relative more than six years ago, the prosecution and defense learned of additional DVDs of evidence gathered by police only after the trial was underway. Like McDonald, Curtis was released from custody following a bond reduction. Criminal defense attorney Stephen Gilmore was recently able to get two felony charges against one of his clients dismissed. Neither case on paper looked very good for the defense. And while some would celebrate and move on, Gilmore instead is sounding the alarm, pointing out that both cases had video evidence issues, including an evading arrest allegation with no dashboard camera footage. San Antonio police concede the video wasn't appropriately tagged by officers or downloaded by prosecutors before it was purged. On an evading case where the whole thing is a traffic incident, I need to see what happened. Thank you so much. All right, go. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez, who this month filed for re-election, was not made available for an interview for this story. In a statement, his office told us there is a tremendous and increasing volume of video evidence submitted by law enforcement to our office every year. Occasionally, technology or process issues between law enforcement agencies and our office prevent video evidence from being filed with a case. 
the DA's office and law enforcement agencies take this seriously and are working together to address the issue. Gonzalez's office, as of late last month, was still reviewing for the second time the 2019 case of an SAPD sergeant who shot and killed a woman while carrying a replica Uzi BB gun after a brief clip of body camera footage surfaced. While the DA claimed publicly that his office wasn't provided a copy of the 18 second clip, SAPD sources say that doesn't tell the whole story and that prosecutors had access to it shortly after the shooting took place. Lapses in communication, Gilmore says, must be fixed. But the idea that we, got, we just got too many cases, you got to cut us a break, that's, that's nonsense. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. BCSO officials did not respond to repeated requests about what happened in the McDonald case evidence. A new state law that went into effect earlier this year could help in the long run. Senate Bill 111 requires law enforcement officers to certify in writing that they have handed over all evidence in possession of their agency. Well, on this story and to check it out again or share it, go to KSAT.com. And for now, let's go ahead and check back with Justin about the temperatures, you know, that we're hoping will change kind of soon. They will. And this has been sort of a December to remember, but in the wrong way because we've had all this heat, right? Uh, setting potentially some more records today. I want to show you what's going on across the country with the cold air. So we've got 21 right now in Casper, three in Cut Bank, six in Bismarck. There is cold air trying to work into the plains now in the wake of yesterday's really powerful system. We showed you some of those stats earlier. 400 wind reports yesterday in places like Iowa and Minnesota where powerful storms came through, reports of tornadoes as well. This storm system is moving east and pulling down some of that colder air. Some of this is trying to work into Texas, but this front you see here actually stalls out. It's not until Saturday that we get a secondary push of cold air and we start to feel it here. In the meantime, it is 33 in Amarillo, 39 Lubbock, 46 Wichita Falls, but out ahead of the front, 70s and even 80s down there in deep south Texas. Not a lot of rain with this front either. We do notice some showers, places uh, like northeast Texas, Arkansas, but we're not looking for a ton of rain today here across the state of Texas and here maybe just a couple sprinkles. That's it. You look at the time lapse, not a lot of fog this morning. We still have some breezy winds and that's helping to uh, keep that fog from forming 71 right now. South southeasterly winds at about nine miles per hour. Dew point is at 67 and looking at the cloud coverage. Quite a bit of it, especially as you go north and west of San Antonio. So the hill country likely going to uh, stay socked in for a while longer than, say, folks around Pleasanton or Gonzales, where the sun is already trying to pop out here. It'll be a mostly cloudy day, just like we've seen the last couple of days, but there will be some sun mixed in there, and that will allow those temperatures to make it up close to record territory. 66 in Kerrville, 69 in Uvalde, 70 Creso Springs, 72 Katua, and then out where we are seeing some sun, it's 74 right now in Gonzales and humid on top of that. As far as the humidity goes, yes, it will be humid today and tomorrow. We finally get a break with that front. And by Sunday, humidity is pretty low. It starts to build back next week. And uh, looking at the forecast for the day, I mentioned close to record territory. The record today is 81. We're forecasting 80. There is an outside chance for a sprinkle or maybe a, a stray shower. Here's the future cast. And as we look at Friday morning, here comes our storm system and by Friday afternoon, it's not moving much. We're still in a cloud cover. But by Saturday morning, front starts to move into our area. Showers and a few thunderstorms, I think possible as it does. Mid morning is where I think rain probably peaks. And then by midday, showers and storms are moving south. Still could see some rain here around San Antonio. By the afternoon, though, I think the rain pushes towards the coast. We get a little bit of a break in the action Saturday afternoon. With that being said, it's still going to be fairly cloudy. It's going to be windy and it's going to be much, much cooler. Temperatures will tumble into the 50s. Then as we get into Sunday, it's still probably quiet Sunday morning. But as an upper level low approaches from the west, by Sunday afternoon, we're going to start to see some showers redeveloping and we've got a decent chance of rain Sunday night into early Monday morning. By midday Monday, this is moving out and we'll get some clearing by Monday afternoon. So if you're planning out your weekend, just some things to think about here. Uh, temperatures in the low 50s Saturday afternoon, gusty winds. There's that 60% chance of rain in the morning and then uh, another chance of rain late Sunday, early Monday. As I said, temperatures stay in the 50s through Monday before warming up into the 60s and 70s next week. We'll be right back.
Tough night for the Spurs. Hornets taking home the win last night. That's right. David Sears is here to break down what happened in a nice way, right? Uh, what happened or what didn't happen? What didn't happen? What did you, what did you say, Steph? They got stung? Yeah. Yeah, they got the whole hornet's nest after. <laughs> more, more, it was more than one sting. It, it was a bunch, man. The hornet started off hot and they continued. How they're one of the best shooting teams in the league, and man, they they showed it last night. Look at this, three and three and three and three. I, look, I don't. They were up like a like a ton after the first quarter, and it just it just got worse from there. One guy on their team, his name is Gerald Hayward. He scored 41. And guess what? He didn't even play the fourth quarter. That's, oh. that's how bad it was for the Spurs. Wow. So they got stung 131 to 115. Um, Brent Forbes led the Spurs. Well, there's Derek White leading the Spurs and leading that break and going down there and got a big slam. Brent Forbes came off the bench and he had 25 last night. So that was uh, that was pretty good for the Spurs. And you notice I'm not like, you know, we're just like, eh. Yeah. It's kind of like the weather. They had a five-game homestand. They win, they lose, they win, they lose. It's like kind of like, you know, kind of like forecast. Up and down. Uh, down. <laughs> Roller coaster like a forecast. No, I mean, that yeah. works. And gray outside, and we're all gloomy, the Spurs, you yeah. know. Aww. Go like, what, uh, three and uh, two and three on the, on the, on the homestand. And then they're going, well, yeah, do we have the sound? Do we want to hear from these guys? David. <laughs> no sound. Okay, no sound. We don't have to hear from these guys. So well, now they got to go out on the road. Right. Right? After four, five at home, they go out on the road for like four. And uh, let me see. Who, by the way. Next up, Utah. Yeah, it's Utah, then Sacramento, yeah. then the Clippers, and then the Lakers. They play back-to-back -back on Sunday and Monday, but then they get a lot. Oh, they get some time in L.A. Ooh, wow. They, they play Monday, and then they don't, have to, <laughs> they don't have to play till Thursday, so they get some beach time. Well, that's good. Oh, can you go to the beach now in California? Is is it all right? Yeah. If we're a mask, I don't, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. So, but, yeah. So <laughs> we're not, I mean, that's, 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 that's enough that to think about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's enough. If, oh. if I read right, wasn't there uh, an absence last night? Lonnie Walker? Was, yeah, he had like a stomach flu, I think. Okay, like yeah, that. so, yeah. you know, it always helps when Lonnie's in the game. True. True. You were talking yeah. about the interviews. Yeah. I know we didn't have them here, but in the earlier no. show, it looked like uh, Derek was pretty disappointed. A couple of the guys were absolutely, hope so. yeah, yeah, Bryn just, and Derek White. You just got uh, stung. Yeah. Yeah, I just it's hard. Nice. Whatever. Well, it's still whatever. <laughs> it's not. Justin, did you get a chance to watch last night at all? I didn't. Okay. I, didn't I just, I'm seeing it for the first time with the highlights, but it didn't look great. Didn't look great. No. Well, I, I watched some of it and it didn't look great. Yeah. I got the highlights. On, I mean, got the updates. Oh, on where, I'm, I'm on living in there. Yeah, come there on over here. Yeah. I'm hiding because I'm just, you know, I'm done. <laughs> oh, you're not that embarrassed for the Spurs at this point. No, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Have I ever been embarrassed about the way? No. <laughs> Maybe they're embarrassed. Oh, it, right. it will right. get better. Right. On the road, let's go. Get let's better. get this thing going. Better luck yeah. against the Jazz yes. on the road. Right. Go David, Spurs, go. Justin, thank you guys. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day. <laughs>